my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to thee, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This morning we have an example of first century Bible study, and it's really quite fascinating. Uh, you can see in all of the Gospels many references to the Hebrew Testament, or to the Old Testament, which we grew up calling it. Um, the reason they put in these references is because their faith was so profound that they saw, when going back to the Hebrew Testament, that Jesus was there. And they saw him all over. In fact, the entire Old Testament, as we used to call it, we now call it the Hebrew Testament because it's not old to Jews. It's their only testament. So we're honoring it that we call it the Hebrew Testament. But when they looked at the Hebrew Testament, they saw Jesus there all along, which helped them to understand some of Jesus' sayings, that he was at the beginning. And since this morning we have a reading from the Gospel according to John, and John is the one that says, in the beginning was God. Jesus was with God in the creation of the world. So we have this strange little story about Moses in the desert, with uh, serpents all over the place, biting those poor Hebrew people who were doing complaining, complaining, complaining. I love it when they complain. I relate to that. So they were complaining about the food. They don't like the food. This manna tastes terrible. We're dying here. Why did you take us away from the land of plenty? What are you doing to us, Moses? And then the serpents came and started biting them, and they started dying. Very dramatic, right? And they said to Moses, Pray for us, Moses. And they also said, we're so sorry. So they repented. They turned to God, which is the movement we always want to be doing, turning towards God, asking Moses to pray. And Moses prays to get rid of the serpents, Lord. Get rid of them. And God does not get rid of the serpents. Did you notice this? He does not get rid of the serpents. He says, make a serpent out of bronze, and you, Moses, raise it up so that they can cast their eyes on this and be healed. Now when John the Evangelist read those words, he said, oh my God, that's Christ. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to look at the cross as the transformation of our agony and death into life everlasting. Now does that feel like a jump for you that John the Evangelist could just look at that verse and see Jesus in it? Maybe we can look at it a little bit and see how he did this, but it is a, an example of the profound faith of the writer of this fourth gospel that he could look back at this particular verse and see so many things in it. And here's what he sees. He's talking always in the fourth gospel about seeing Jesus, not just with our eyes, but seeing with our hearts knowing what the significance of Jesus is. And for John the Evangelist, the significance of Jesus is that he is eternal life. He not only brings us eternal life, he himself is eternal life. And that when God raises him up on the cross to die, and notice that it's a human thing that happens here, but that God is using what's human or what's natural, like poisonous snakes, poisonous people, death and pain and agony, God transforms all of that through Jesus. So it's not saying the snakes are good. It's not saying what happened to Jesus was good. It was not good. It was done in darkness and ignorance. But the pain that he endures, he does in solidarity with all of us and all of the pain that we continue to endure. Turning to God and recognizing Christ and God and our life everlasting doesn't get rid of all of our pain. And it doesn't mean we're not going to get sick. But it does mean that we look harder for getting saved when we're hurting. We look to Moses and say, pray for us, Moses. And we look to Jesus and say, why, oh Lord, why me? I don't like this. Make it go away. And that's one thing that God never does. God never makes it go away. God is always transforming it. And this is what this gospel reading is telling us today. That when 
we lift up something to look our eyes upon it. And here we have a crucifix with Jesus on the cross dressed as a king. So he's not in agony in that image. He is crowned with glory. He has risen from the dead. He's sitting on the right hand of God, and that's what that cr crucifix means. But in the early centuries of our church, there were no crucifixes. The idea of having a cross with a corpus on it, with the body on it, was anathema to the earliest Christians. It was a shameful way to die. They didn't want any reminder of it. And this is not referring, this reading is not referring to crucifixes. It is looking at the image of a dying Christ overlaid with the image of Christ rising from the dead. So when we hold up crosses, we're doing the same motion. It's called uh, lifting up in the original Greek, or uh, upsoko. I'm not sure I remember that word right. But anyway, the word says raising up. So Jesus is raised up from the dead. He is raised up into heaven during the ascension, and he was physically raised up on the cross when he was crucified. And for the fourth evangelist, the fourth gospel, that is all the same action. It all is collapsed into one event, so that we're to look at any pain that we suffer as already being transformed. We just can't figure it out. Notice that the end of the gospel talks about the lightness and the dark. Those of us who believe are in the light, and those who are in the dark are sinful. And they're in the dark and they have sinned somehow, that they're not seeing the light. That's kind of confusing, and it makes us feel like, uh-oh, I hope I'm not in the dark. I don't want to be in the dark. And it's not meant that way. It's meant for us to look at we are a mixture of lightness and dark always. When our fear takes over us, we're, we're human. Fear takes over us, and we're fearful, and we're in the dark. And then when our fear is transformed into hope and uh, good deeds, we are transformed by that, and we're in the light. So we're doing this dance in our faith where we're in the light, we're in the dark, we're in the light, we're in the dark, and we know that about each other. So we preach the gospel and explain the gospel in order to shed a little light on it so that we have that little click that says, oh, I see that in a new way, and that gives me hope. And that's what we're supposed to do as Christians, is find a little hope in Scripture and see that it was always there. We just didn't have the eyes to see it. So we look at this reading as looking at the agony of Christ in a new way, knowing that we can't go back and undo the crucifixion. We wish it hadn't happened. But because it did happen, God used that suffering and transformed it into a resurrection and the life eternal that all of us share. And we share in that every time we come into this church to worship and to sing out of our blue book and pray out of our red book. We are always teaching each other anew how to walk in the light and be children of God. Amen. Please stand as you are able.